What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So before I really get into, into today's video, I, I gotta show you something. This is the state of my garage right now. So, you know, going into the new year, I'm really trying to kind of up my YouTube game. Um, I mean, I've got, you know, a metal working metal fab project going on over here. I've got an automotive project going on over there. I've got parts for today's video right there. I mean, this place, I mean, I'm not even gonna show you the, the other side of the garage. I mean, this is just, it's crazy. Trying to get all this stuff done and recorded and get content out there. So like I said, the metal fab video is going on right now, the automotive, but today's video is more like, I guess it's gonna be more like a home repair DIY video. So over in this corner of my garage, I've got you know my hot water heater, got my workbench, and I've got the focus of today's video. This is the issue, my water softener. This thing has been giving me nothing but problems for the last couple months. I mean, it's been in bypass for the last two. Um, so this thing, it's gotta go. So in order to get this thing out of here, obviously the first thing I need to do is kill the water. Now I've got a water shut off over on the other side of the garage. So I'm gonna go hit that and then uh, work on getting this thing out of here. With the water off, this thing is ready to get the hell out of here. So looking at things here, um, in order to get this thing out, what I wanna do is I wanna leave my water pipes connected right now, um, just because I still have to get some parts. I gotta figure out for what's gonna be going here. I got some plumbing stuff to figure out. So what I found was, so this is the bypass. So with this pulled out, um, the water goes through the water softener. So I've got it pushed in, bypassing the water softener. So I started poking around, took the lid off obviously, and found that there are these two clips here. And what they do is they hold the pipe here into the, or the bypass, the valve here in the water softener. So I got those pulled out, pulled the pipes out. A Little bit of water came out, not too bad, but that pretty much just disconnects the water softener from the water lines. And now this thing can come out. With your water softener out, now it's just a matter of, you know, slide your new one in place, make your connections and follow your manufacturer's steps to get it up and running. I'm not going that route. I'm going with a whole house water filter system. Uh, this one is by APEC. I'll leave a link in the description below. So the reason I decided to go with a whole house water filter system instead of a water softener is I'm just not a fan of water softeners. I mean, first, you know, there are times where you know, getting out of the shower, it just feels like I didn't get all the soap off. You just don't like that, that kind of feeling. Um, but the main reason why is because water softeners can do damage to your water heaters. So we moved into this house in 2015. Now, I don't know the history of the water heater before that. I don't know how old it was. But in 2016, our water heater failed. Um, so I got a new one installed. And then in December of 2020, so what, four and a half years later about, the anode in my water heater was gone. Um, I didn't know that water softeners can affect the anode in your water heater. Having come from California where we never had a water softener, I had water heaters last, you know, a decade with no problem. Um, then this past December, December 2020, 21, sorry, my water heater failed again. And you know, both times you know, when I got some information about the anode after talking with the plumber, and then when the plumbers came out to replace this water heater, I was talking with them some more. And there are plenty of documented issues, I guess, with water softeners causing damage with water heaters. It causes you have to do a lot more maintenance to your water heater, which I mean, I was, I would drain it every six months, but still it uh, caused issues with my water heater. So that's the main reason why I decided to go with this whole house filter system instead of a water softener. So for this system, I've already got it mounted to the wall where I want it. Um, the only th real requirements, obviously I got to take into account 
the inlet, which is on that side, and the outlet is on this side. But you gotta make sure you have four inches of clearance underneath the filter housing to be able to get those off. So I made sure I have plenty of clearance there with the, the lip of the platform that my water heater sits on. So with that all good, um, I actually turned my water back on last night once I got done mounting this to the wall so that, you know, could shower this morning and do whatever. So my water is on right now. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to work on doing all the plumbing as far as putting in the connections and the valves and get everything ready so that when I do have to turn the water off again and drain the lines that it'll be a quick connection. So that's what I'm going to do now. When it came to figuring out just how I wanted to plumb this filter system in, my original thought was I'll just go PVC. And that would mean, you know, obviously a lot of cutting and gluing and routing everything right. Um, but I decided to go with shark connectors instead. Granted, yes, these are much more expensive than going with PVC. But unlike going with just, just regular copper and sweat fittings, Obviously, the, that's really permanent. And I have to worry about damaging the drywall when sweating the copper. Uh, the PVC, it's more permanent because everything's glued together. What I really like about the Shark Bite is the simplicity and the fact that the connectors are reusable. So even though it's more expensive, if I screw up or if I decide I want to move this thing, I can reuse my fittings. You know, you get this little removal tool like this thing here and you can remove all your fittings and reuse them, reconfigure however you want. So yes, it's more expensive, but it's super simple. You just cut your tube and it just literally slides on and locks in place and they're reusable. All right, so here I'm just kind of laying things out, trying to get an idea of how everything's gonna fit. I want everything to fit in this area. I wanna to try to reuse these flexible lines if possible. And I also want everything, you know, I guess I had to fit in this general area. Um, so I kind of did some planning last night and looking at things. So I have an idea. So on the output, on the inlet and the output of the filter, these are one inch fittings. So here I've got a, a one inch to three quarter adapter. Let me show you. So this there, this is a, a one inch thread to a three quarter female adapter. And then I have my three quarter 90 to shark bite. So that'll go here. Like I just had it. And like I said, this is just a mock-up. I'm not, obviously no Teflon tape on there yet. No nothing. I'm just kind of mocking this up to get an idea. And then out of here, I'm going to have a shutoff valve. And what, that's, what that shutoff valve is going to do is allow me to turn off the water coming out of the filter because right above it, I'm going to have a, a T fitting that's going to go across to another valve. And then there will be a shutoff valve on the input side. So what I'll do if need be is I can turn off the input, turn off the output, open the valve up top here, and that'll bypass the entire filter system. And that way, when it comes time to um, service the filters, I throw it in bypass, I don't have to turn the water off, and everything continues to function as normal. So I'm gonna start by getting my fittings on, doing Teflon tape, and getting everything installed. So when it comes to installing your fittings into the, the housing of the filter bracket, um, the manufacturer for this setup says to use Teflon tape. Um, it specifically says, do not use plumber's putty. So I'm gonna wrap these threads with some tape and trying to be aware of <clears throat> the way I wrap it so that as you install the fitting, it doesn't unwrap your Teflon tape. So because I'm wrapping it this way, now when I thread this in, it'll the threads will work right along with the tape and not peel it off. I'm not left-handed. <laughs> 
There you can see that one inch to three quarter adapter installed on the outlet of the filter housing. So now I'll do the three quarter inch elbow to the shark bite connector. Now the only thing I'm not thrilled about in this setup is the fact that I gotta deal with these connectors because this pipe's probably gonna come right up in front of those. Now, I probably could have come out and then up, but I'll deal with it. I'll probably, like I said, I'm gonna build this whole thing, or at least this side. I'm, only, I'm gonna mock this side up and get it together, and then I'll do the inlet side off the wall just because of the water heater here is not much space. Um, so that'll allow me to at least get it all together and then I'll deal with these fittings. So shouldn't be a problem. All right, so next I need to put the, uh, the ball valve on. This is the shut off the output of the filters. I'm gonna put it right here. This way the handle faces out and it's a uh, easy, you know, access to the handle. So I did a trial fit with a piece of copper tube or copper pipe to see how far it goes into the shark bite connectors. So this one, it goes in an inch and a 16th is the distance needed for this to go all the way into the fitting. So in order to obviously fit two fittings together, I need at least two and an eighth. But I also wanna make sure that I leave clearance for putting the removal tool in between there to get fittings off if need be. So I'm at two and an eighth plus the size of the removal tool, which is what, three eighths? That's two and a half. Let's go two and five eighths, just a little bit of wiggle room. So to cut the copper down to two and five eighths, obviously just make your measurement. Two and a half, two and five eighths. And if you've never worked with copper before, this is the tool you use for, for cutting copper pipe. Just slides on and you line up this cutting edge here with your mark. Like I said, if you've never done this, it's really simple trying to work and be on camera at the same time is a little bit more difficult. That's why projects always take longer when you're recording YouTube videos. You just tighten this down, you start turning. And then every so often you make a, tighten the wheel a little bit more. It just continues to score the copper pipe. There you go. Now you take the end of your tool here. That just cleans it up. Then all you do is you take your freshly cut pipe. All right, so with the first piece of copper installed, the first pipe, I can install my shutoff valve. So I'm going to make sure that I have nice, easy access to the handle. And there's the handles not going to interfere with the bracket, with anything else around it. So I'm going to have the handle here in front. It'll turn it off easy and back on. Now there's this piece here inside. That white plastic that goes inside of the copper tube. So you just need to make sure everything kind of lines up. And that goes in there, okay. You just snug it all together. So there's the first half of my plumbing setup for my filter system. Again, this is the shutoff valve for the outlet. This shutoff valve is for the bypass. So in normal configuration, this one will be off, this one will be on, and that way the water can flow across down in there, through the filters, back out here to there, and out to the house. It also looks like I'll be able to reuse my two flexible lines 
the top one is shorter than the bottom one, I'll probably just flip them. And that way I can go right from right there, come around and up to that fitting with the short, with the short flexible, and then the long one will go up there and over to where I have the inlet. I'm also adding a shutoff valve right there. That way, if any of this gives me issues, I can kill the whole line right here and not have to go all the way to the other side of the garage to turn off my water. Now it's just a matter of building everything on this side. So here I've removed the entire filter bracket, filter housing bracket from the wall so I could build the rest of the lines away from my water heater here. I'm not sure if I showed this, but here are the two mounts that I used. Uh, I checked, they're not in studs. I mean, my shelf bracket there is in a wall stud. So I ended up using this type of focus, this type of drywall anchor. So I just drill the pilot hole and then these screw right in and these should be more than sufficient to hold the weight of that entire assembly. Now that I've got my entire setup here put together, I've got the water turned off to the house. I've got a hose hooked up to this fitting right here. I'm going to drain the lines in the house. Got the hose running out the garage door and the pipes are being drained. After just a few minutes, all the pipes are drained. I even opened the bypass valve from the old uh, water softener just to help it along a little bit, raise this up so it was higher than the pipes and it just helped get air in the lines. I also went upstairs and opened uh, one of the faucets in the, in the bathroom. But now that the pipes are all drained, I can remove the flex lines. All right, so the pipes weren't fully drained. This is the with those out of the way, I can now go ahead and add the add a shutoff valve here to the inlet. So this way I can have a shutoff valve right here, be able to turn off everything rather than have to go either out to the sidewalk or on the other side of the garage or turn the water off. I'd be able to turn it off right here. So here's a good example of why I really like the shark bite connectors. So, you know, with this being tightened down all the way, my shutoff valve isn't obviously where I want it, but with shark bite, the connections stay movable. So I'm going to do my whole assembly here or my installation probably like in stages. So right now you can see, I've got the valve closed and I've actually turned the water on back on the other side of the garage. Now, I wanted to do that to make sure that I obviously have no leaks before I continued on with the rest of the installation. So I know from here to the ball valve or to the valve here is good. No leaks, no nothing. Now I can continue with the rest of it. Well, as you can see, everything is installed. The water is on. Um, the main inlet valve is open. The bypass is closed and the return to the house, the outlet from the filters is also open. So that means all the water, everything's flowing through the filters. Now, unfortunately, what you can't see is my floor. It's a little wet. Um, I did run into a couple of issues. The first being on the inlet side here, um, I did have a couple of shark bite connectors get damaged. Um, so, in the connectors here, there is an O-ring. So, apparently I didn't deburr a couple of the copper pipes well enough. And, let's see how well this might show up here. You can see on that O-ring, where is it? Right there. Right at the top there. There is a chunk taken out of that O-ring. And this one is the least damaged. Uh, there were a couple that, when I found the leaks, it obviously took it all apart and I was looking, trying to find out why it was leaking. And a couple of them, when I pulled the shark bite connector off, pieces of O-ring fell out. So I did end up having to replace a couple of the shark bites, um, but got, the, got that straightened out. It actually was 
obviously this one at the inlet, this elbow and this T, actually all three of those. I guess I was getting close to the end and rushing and then a deeper, a couple of the copper pipes enough. Lesson learned, but expensive lesson. Um, the other thing I had to, another thing I had to change or I had to do was I, I wanted to have a shutoff valve here. Um, unfortunately, it would have come out too far and the flexible lines aren't flexible enough to make that, that joggle or that, that bend. Um, I was going to try to reuse my existing flex lines. Unfortunately, I couldn't, I could use uh, one of them, but the other I couldn't use. It was just, it wasn't flexible enough to make, make this bend. So I did have to pick up another flexible hose and that goes on the outlet side. Um, oh, third issue I ran into. Third? Yeah, th third, I think. Um, had air so once I got the leaks figured out, I, what I did was I had turned off all the valves and then turned the water back on, made sure I was good up to the valves. And then I opened the bypass valve so that it could flow back into the house, made sure that part was good. And then I slowly cracked open the inlet to the filters. And that went great until the water got filled up the third filter and then it just sprayed. Um, apparently I, I had left the O-ring that goes on top of the, the filter housing. There's an O-ring there. Well, there's supposed to be an O-ring there. Apparently it was still in the box. So again, lesson learned, gotta pay a little bit more attention. But now that I got it all figured out, everything is hooked up, no leaks, everything is running great. Well, there you have it. So like I said earlier, if I was looking to replace my water softener, it would have been just a matter of you know sliding in the new one and making the connections. Uh, for an initial installation like this, um, you could do it with PVC, you can do it with shark bite, copper, flex lines for the connections. Like I said, I decided to go with the whole house filter instead, so I had to make some modifications. Really wasn't that hard. It's pretty much taken me all day having to run back and forth to the big blue box store for, for stuffs. But, you know, if you don't, I, like if you lay everything out like I did prior, get to the store, get everything you need, get home, get it together. It'll only take you a couple hours. Um, this has been an all day affair because, well, if you don't break your connectors or forget to install an O-ring, it would have gone a lot faster. But live and learn. So again, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that subscribe, hit the bell, Leave a comment down below. Let me know. You guys running, you know, water softener? You running a filter? Do you want to run one or the other? Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>